Necromancy in Divinity Original Sin 2 is pretty nicely done, with heaps of interesting spells for doing all kinds of damage, buffing and debuffing, but it doesn't offer too much in the way of undead minions. I'm just going to briefly touch on the state of the game in vanilla, for people that have no idea what the minions and stuff in it are like. If you're already familiar with Divinity Original Sin 2 and how the minions work, you can click the timestamp here and skip ahead to the point where I actually talk about the mods. The vanilla experience gives you a bloated corpse and also a bone spider called the Bone Widow, but unfortunately these summons also come with an infuriating one summon limit. The bloated corpse is only good as a meat shield or suicide unit. Its standard attack doesn't do much damage. The explosion is good though and deals a high amount of damage. The bloated corpse also leaves a trail of blood behind it wherever it goes which is useful for your other necromancy skills that can make use of blood surfaces. The Bone Widow is a good melee unit, and it can devour corpses to strengthen itself, as well as burrow, allowing it to access hard to reach places. At level 10 summoning, both of these minions change into larger and more powerful forms. Both of these minions have high physical shielding, but no magical shielding. This makes them extremely vulnerable to disabling magical effects like freezing, charm, and electrical stunning. They also both require an existing corpse on the battlefield to be summoned, and the corpse gets consumed to create them. Please keep in mind that I play this game on Tactician difficulty, which is the hardest setting, because I do enjoy the insane battles and situations the game throws at me. My experience and opinions are formed from that difficulty setting alone. What I find with the vanilla summons is that the enemy is able to disable them almost immediately. Freezing them or stunning them with electricity is really easy to do, and can happen pretty much as soon as you place the minion on the floor. This means that most of the time, the minions are out of action and unable to help you. In the worst case, they get charmed, and you just have wasted your time making an extra enemy for you to fight. The incarnate minion from the summoning skill is far more useful than the undead minions and you'll always have a high summoning skill as a necromancer because it buffs your undead minions. The incarnate doesn't require a corpse to be summoned, making it available in any situation, and is also stronger than the undead minions and comes with both physical and magical shielding by default. This shielding can be further buffed and reinforced with infusions that grant it extra abilities as well, like whirlwind and charge attacks, ranged magical attacks and even roguelike abilities. An incarnate can be molded into whatever you need, warrior, mage, rogue, or a mixture of all of them. Furthermore, the incarnate will be infused with whatever surface you spawn it on. If spawned on blood, it deals physical damage and has a ranged life leeching necromancy attack. On fire, it deals fire damage and can shoot a fireball. On poison, it deals poison damage and can shoot a poison bolt. Water deals water damage and it can also cast a healing spell. Oil deals earth damage and grants the ability to throw a boulder that explodes and oils the enemy, slowing them. And finally, on an electric surface, it gets lightning attacks and deals electrical damage. There are also other infusions you can unlock later on, like acid. Anyway, to cut a long story short, as a summoner in vanilla, the Incarnate is your primary minion and also the most useful one. The only time you ever want an undead one is if your Incarnate has just died and is on cooldown. There is no situation where an undead minion performs better than the incarnate, and due to the one minion limit, you're going to be using the incarnate almost all of the time. The Necromancer Overhaul by Odin Blade fixes these problems somewhat. It grants you four new minions. The Undead Warrior, who has the skills Battering Ram, Whirlwind, Taunt, and All-In. The Undead Assassin, whose skills are Cloak and Dagger, Sawtooth Knife, Gag Order, Flurry, and Sucker Punch. The Undead Elementalist, with the spells Hail Strike, Fossil Strike, Electric Discharge, Searing Volley, and a Poison Staff Attack. And finally, the Bone Golem. He's a big, tanky dude who fills a support role. His skills are Unearth Corpse, Bone Cage, and Living on the Edge. All of these minions spawn with both physical and magical shielding, which already makes them vastly more useful than the Bloated Corpse and the Bone Widow. They also have useful abilities that make sense for the minion. In addition to these minions, there's also a spell which allows you to reanimate zombies whenever you deal the finishing blow when killing an enemy. It only lasts for two rounds, so timing on this one is key. 
I haven't managed to try it out. My build hasn't really given me any opportunities to try this because generally my minions are dealing all the killing blows and things, but these zombies are short-lived, very temporary affairs. The Incarnate is still superior to all of these minions. It's far tankier and deals at least double the damage. But for their given niche role, they perform slightly better than the Incarnate. The Bone Golem is the only minion that can do things the Incarnate can't, due to its support spells. The Golem's ability to cast Living on the Edge has saved my butt in a couple of hairy situations. It allows a character or someone to resist death for a couple of turns. He's also a free minion, in a sense, because although he costs a corpse to make, he can also put a corpse back down for you. One of the best spells is a new spell called Overlord. It allows you to have three minions active in addition to your incarnate for five turns, but all of your undead minions have reduced constitution and action points. What this means is, in theory, you can have four minions out on the field your incarnate and three undead minions of your choice. The moment you cast a non-undead summon like an incarnate though, Overlord is broken, so make sure you've got your non-undead minion out in the field first before you cast this. But here's the catch. In practice, four minions is very rare. Because your undead minions require corpses, you're very unlikely to have all of them out at the same time. Typically you have your incarnate out all of the time because he is a beast and your most useful minion and he has no prerequisites like corpses in order to summon him. Then once he manages to kill someone you can cast overlord and then also raise an undead minion. Hopefully you can keep killing and eventually have all your minions out. Occasionally the battle site already has corpses on it and you can make use of all of your minions immediately but this is rarely the case. The solution to this is to have a party of four characters each of them with at least one point in necromancy, and all of them having the Unearth Corpse spell. When combat begins, you can make each character slap down a corpse, and then that's four corpses to make use of. And you can reach maximum minions very quickly. But if you've chosen to go for a party of two with Lone Wolf, like I did, you're shit out of luck. Your Minion Mancy Necromancer build is going to be somewhat of a waste of skill slots, except in the rare situations where there's already corpses in the battlefield to make use of. This corpse requirement is honestly quite punishing for a minion master build, and it rarely lets you achieve full potential, unless you choose the game, like I described before, by making sure that all of your party members have that unearthed corpse skill. But here's how it is for my lone wolf party. Luce is a necromancer, and so am I. Both of us have unearthed corpse, but that's only two minions. So one necromancer is running at three minions maximum, while the other only has one minion. This is pretty crap. If you're smart about it, and you first make a golem, who then makes a corpse, at that point you have one necromancer who's got maximum minions, but the other one won't have reached their potential. Also, minions die pretty fast in combat, so I'm generally floating at only a couple of minions per battle. Also, battles don't go your way. You can cast Overlord, get your minion out, and then you get frozen, charmed, knocked down, or even killed, and then you've got no minions. Another gripe I have is that I don't think these minions are balanced for tactician difficulty. I'm currently in Act 4, and they're dropping like flies. Even if I could immediately summon all of them, it would still be an uphill battle. I'm sure they work fine in easy difficulties, or, you know, maybe I just suck. But I don't see any way I could be doing anything better than I already am. My summoning is maxed out and so is my necromancy. These are the strongest minions possible, and they're little more than a speed bump for most of these enemies. But thankfully, Odin Blade offers a remedy for this with the Enhanced Summon Scaling mod. I very much recommend that you use this mod as well. It permits your summons bonuses consistent with your attributes. For example, for every point of constitution your character has, the minion is buffed with a 3% vitality boost per point of constitution. It also offers a cool new mechanic called boons. When an attribute reaches 25 points or higher, when you summon a minion it gets a special buff. I think that there's some room for improvement on this to get the best necromancer minionmancy experience possible. I feel like the undead warrior, undead assassin and undead elementalist are a bit underpowered. In my experience they very rarely live to see a third round in combat. 
The corpse requirement also needs some work. It's silly to have to cheese the gam by giving every member of your party the unearthed corpse spell, just so that you're able to utilize your quite squishy undead minions. It also means that if you play Lone Wolf, you're never going to be able to have enough corpses to properly utilize your minions. The Bone Golem and Overlord ability are both nice how they are, but I would prefer it if Overlord was like a toggled ability or had a vastly extended duration. Maybe something like 20 rounds? As it is, it lasts 5 rounds and when it expires the surplus minions will be destroyed. These minions don't come cheap, you know, they cost corpses. And especially in Lone Wolf, these corpses don't grow on trees. I really like Odin Blades mods. They're high quality, well executed, and it goes a long way towards making this a minion friendly game. I'm scoring this a 7.4 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It falls down on some key areas which I will elaborate on shortly. Please keep in mind, my scoring system isn't ever meant to bash a game or mod. It's supposed to help you decide as a person looking for a good Minimancy experience, if a game or mod will provide it. So to elaborate on the score above, you can only have under optimal conditions 4 minions out at once. So for plentiful minions, I think it's fair to give 4 points for 4 minions. This is kind of generous, considering that without the cheesing I described earlier, you might be lucky to have 2 minions out on the field. The minions are of course very useful, but they are also very squishy. For a full score here, I'd like to see them slightly buffed. They just seem to drop like flies a lot of the time. The minions are all on a timer of 5 rounds or so. The incarnate, in contrast, persists for 10 rounds. Although a lot can be done in 5 rounds, I still consider this to be an annoying, fun killing kind of mechanic. Why have a round limit at all? The corpses you need to make them with don't come easily, unless you're cheesing with a nerf corpse, of course. I like that in order to have more minions with Overlord, you must weaken yourself. That's the type of thing I like to see. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped you find something fun to play. I've got more videos and necromancy stuff coming soon. By the way, it's been a while since I made a video. Maybe six weeks. Certainly more than a month. If you're curious as to why that is, it's nothing all that exciting. It's simply because I haven't been feeling like making videos lately. I'm not running out of games or mods to cover or anything like that. There's actually a shitload of them to do. And in the unlikely event that I ever run out of necromancy games to cover, there's like an infinite supply of Skyrim mods to delve into, so there's really no worry about running out of stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I really love this game by the way. It's possibly the best RPG I've ever played. Just everything is so polished about it, and there's so much content, it's really amazing.